the adjustment is working all right. It's a crude setup, not rated for the high seas, but this is a test and even with this small angle, I'm doubling the input. In sunny conditions, you basically double the input when you angle the panels even just slightly. And as a bonus, you will open up that back layer of the bifacial panels. So when I make this adjustable feature for all of the panels on my roof, we will get huge amounts of solar input and then we can travel at impressive speeds consistently. The scenery here in the canals is just breathtaking and seeing my solar setup work so efficiently even with the unoptimized design of the Helios 11 just makes me so excited to keep developing the next model. We're secured at the lock. Let's get into the topic of the future super yacht. Based on the current impressive performance of the Helios 11, as well as the upgraded version, all the upgrades I will make are listed here, will turn this into a true ocean-going, infinite-range fast explorer. So based on this, we can build something truly epic, either a 15 to 20 meter long, very narrow, sleek mono hull, that should be quite stable with all of the mass so deep down under the waterline. But the ultimate most efficient hull design is the SWATH design. The abbreviation SWATH stands for small water plane twin hull and that is the most efficient and balanced design for building something affordable out of plywood. We're talking about million dollar luxury yachts that outperform other similar sized vessels but they're not gonna be a million. You could build this for 100k in your backyard or even like 30k if you simply build everything yourself. I use intuitive design from my own experience on the Helios 11 as well as my childhood that I spent most of the time on my father's hand-built sailing boat and then I combine that with AI research that can verify my models and reflect my most innovative highest version of myself. This is how we can build the future and through this content I'm now invoking the age of innovation. It's a golden age where we have all the tools to build amazing enterprise solo. You can build literally anything. The systems are there and it's up for you to take advantage of these technologies that are arising. But the machine cannot build beauty alone. That is why people like me and perhaps you are needed. So gentlemen, now we're gonna open our minds and remove all limiting beliefs and this will allow us to step into the future where we build ultra-efficient, fast solar explorer yachts with infinite range and over 300 nautical miles single-day cruise ranges. So why do I believe most solar yachts fail? They use normal hulls, they use normal catamaran hulls which are highly inefficient compared to what I've discovered. The ideal hull type, both for performance and comfort for a solar yacht, would be to have a catamaran with two underwater torpedo pontoons. This is not something I've invented. When you have underwater torpedoes, you completely ignore waves. There's no such thing as wave making resistance or hull speeds. You simply cruise forward at incredible pace with low energy. So this right here is the idealized hull with completely submerged pontoons. This hull right here has a nearly zero wave response, but we're gonna take it one step down to build something that is realistic, low cost and yet efficient. This leads us naturally to a hybrid version of a standard catamaran and a underwater pontoon kind of torpedo design. This proposed swath design would be incredibly easy to build out of plywood or foam core composite. The advantage of these ultra-narrow hulls is that they pierce the waves very efficiently and have very low response to waves. You would basically slide through all of the medium waves and ride on top of the larger waves. The narrow hull of 35 to 40 centimeters would mean that you have practically no wave-making resistance and almost no cap of your top speed. It's slightly less efficient than the underwater torpedo design, 
but still the advantage is that you can place the batteries underneath the water line. I would not put uh, batteries in a closed compartment under the water. For some reason that feels off. I want to have access to the batteries and with these 35 to 45 centimeter wide holes you could practically go in there, you could lower your batteries all the way down there under the water line to get exceptional stability. So all things taken into consideration, the Swath design would provide the highest ROI when it comes to performance as well as stability. So a traditional catamaran, even though it would be much larger than the Halo 13, would be rolling much more, slamming much more, as it is left behind in the wake. This is way more efficient and also more comfortable. We hit the last lock for today. Unfortunately, it is closed. It's gonna open up tomorrow morning. And now we're gonna set up anchor here to get the last rays of sunshine to fully charge our batteries. I'm not sure how legal it is to anchor in the canals, but nobody's gonna pass here either way. So I'll be here for a couple hours to charge up. For the night, I'll secure the Helios 11 at the side of the canal. Sailing the Helios 11 for over two months and uh, learning from my mistakes and successes, I've understood what really makes a Solar Explorer yacht function. It's the lightweight and sleek hull, but the magical discovery here is that when we take this swath design, the hull is so incredibly efficient that we don't actually have to go light. My initial estimate for the mass of the Halo 13 was somewhere between 4000 and 4000. 1500 kilograms but now as we have even increased efficiency of the hull why not make it a six ton vessel even eight tons so kind of lightweight but still incredibly massive taken into consideration the very low wave response as it's gonna be cutting through the waves the heavier we can make the boat the deeper the holes will sink, the holes will not become wider, they will go deeper into the water where they face less resistance from the surface layer of the water. This hull is what I think will make the Halo 13 act like a train going through rough seas, but still it will have that lightweight performance and barely any resistance at cruise speeds of 7 to 15 knots. So 4 tons for a 5x 13 meters catamaran, that's ultra lightweight, but the 6 tons, 7-8 tons will be a middle ground where we can load up batteries underneath the water line. And I think with this model, the total cruise range with zero solar input would be 300 nautical miles at uh, a cruise speed of 12 to 13 knots. These sound like fantasy numbers, even for me, I'm very optimistic in all of my estimates, but we can take the numbers of the Helios 13 in its current shape, and based on that, these outrageous estimates are actually quite conservative. We're talking about a build that will be created out of plywood, something I could build single-handedly in uh, one and a half years, but of course I will find the right people to do that for me, and I will also physically be at the workshop putting together the most important pieces. The major problem with solar catamarans is that huge windage on the front side, also on the side. Most catamarans have a very large surface area, which means you will be in trouble going headwind 
in rough weather. But that's not a problem with this design. As you can see, it's very sleek. I've made it narrow intentionally, not only to reduce windage, but also to lengthwise increase in solar area, makes the holes longer and even narrower. You can have super sharp holes. The only reason why our holes in this design are 35 to 45 centimeters wide is to have access to the batteries underneath the water line and also to sink in a guy to make some work down there. So technically, if I were building a 25 meter long catamaran, the holes would still be 40 centimeters wide. And that only becomes possible when you extend the hole forward instead of to the sides. A room of five to six meters is already wide and luxurious enough and you will be able to build a proper saloon. This will ensure incredible performance as well as mid-sized super yacht luxury levels. Another advantage of the narrow catamaran design is that you can fit into most marinas. There's yet another huge benefit of this design. Take a look at how deep these holes cut into the water. Do you think you would need a additional keel here? I don't think so. You might get away with almost no additional keels. Maybe a centerboard you can sink in for when it's really needed. But this uh, feature of not needing a keel will also reduce the resistance that the hull makes when going through the water. It will reduce the complexity of the build, thus reducing the cost or increasing the size of your vessel you can build for the same cost. What materials are optimal for a solar explorer? You want to build on a affordable budget and still reach super yacht level luxury and performance. Plywood and glass fiber. Plywood and glass fiber makes for a natural feel and something that is rapidly put together on a low budget. When having well ventilated holes and covering the bottom part underneath the water line with several layers of reinforcing biaxial glass fiber weave, you will have water resistance, strong impact resistance, and the hull will be all good for over 50 years. Any damage, easy to fix, modifications, you just need a couple tools and you can get started right away. A plywood build can either feel very DIY, simple and looks like a project such as this one, but when executed correctly you will get a very warm feeling and you will almost not need any interior panels. That's the problem when you build with foam core, glass fiber, plastic, you will have to put another layer on top of your inside and that's gonna increase the mass that's gonna increase the duration and cost of your build what if instead you spend time in warm climates 15 to 30 degrees you insulate the hole gently with uh, wool linen natural materials make sure there's no moisture no mold all will be beautiful natural warm to the feel non-toxic a very holistic environment where you can work you can live together with your family you can build the future in a healthy space that's my vision as well combining this futuristic luxury with uh, sheepskins and natural materials that might be very expensive and also higher in aesthetics and luxury than most luxury yachts claim to be but back to the whole construction out of plywood and glass fiber reinforcement. In this design, there are no visible compromises. If you can come up with what I'm compromising here, I would like you to enlighten me. I want you to point out all my stupid ideas, all my mistakes I might be doing. And then in that way, we are together creating this future super yacht with infinite range, aesthetics, and no strange hasty decisions, such as <laughs> this wooden setup with the test version of adjustable panels. That's something which is not planned. I just wanted to get it done immediately. I wanted to try it out. I wanted to extend my range and performance of the Helios 11 as I'm reaching closer and closer to the warmth of the Mediterranean where we will get amazing amounts of solar input from the sunlight. Now here in winter the solar yacht is already functioning quite properly. 
If I could choose between the Helios 11 and the very beautiful wooden performance sailing boat of 33 foot that my father built in four years, I would choose the Helios 11 every day unless I'm gonna go on a voyage around the world. If I'm traveling one day, two days, taking a break in a marina, taking a break in a beautiful anchorage, charging up to full speed, I will always have superior performance with this unoptimized prototype compared to a sailing boat that easily goes seven, eight knots that I spent most of my childhood summers in. When I go through all different scenarios of how we've been sailing for five, six, eight hour trips and uh, having even very good wind, I could uh, outperform that almost every day with the Helios 11. Either because uh, I have more stable performance, I can go headwind immediately, I don't need to be lifting up any sails. Whenever we've spent several days at an island swimming, enjoying sunshine, the batteries of the Helios 11 would always be full. The sailing is quicker, obviously, on my father's kind of racing level performance, 33 foot sailing boat with a retractable and adjustable keel. We went easily seven to 10 knots in good winds. That was not a miracle at all. We went 22 knots in kind of a storm, but we're talking about sailing. It's not as predictable as sitting inside a comfortable cabin, just heading straight toward your destination. Sailing takes more energy, more maintenance, and this is why I'm so optimistic of the future of solar yacht. It's not longer a gimmick, a cool feature to have the solar boats or electric propulsion. This is clearly superior. There's no reason to have sails unless you're gonna be in winter. And uh, yeah, I'm currently kind of in winter and I'm already outperforming sailing boats of similar size class when you compare a standard day cruising lifestyle. But if we talk about crossing the oceans in winter with the solar yacht, of course a sailing boat will outperform. It all depends if you want impressive cruising speed for let's say 5 to 10 hours or if you want a week's worth of travel non-stop where you have the autopilot on when you're sleeping in your sailing boat that's gonna outperform the solar yacht prototype but not the ultimate version not the upgraded version of Helios 11 the upgraded version of the Helios 11 right here will also outperform any other 1.5 ton sailing boat. Now I think it's time to look at some concept images of the Halo 13 Swath Design small water plane twin hull. So what I promise here is incredible performance that you can replicate for low cost or then you can expand upon this, hire a shipyard, pay them 1 million and build a true super yacht with infinite range, not that gimmick solar yacht that needs to recharge at the marina, something that truly outperforms the competition because there's no competition. We're moving to the future where literal airships running on solar power are possible. Five to ten years, I'm gonna build an airship. I'm not making this up. I've seen the vision already and of course I will build the Halo 13 first. In the next video, we will take a look at the solar array, the solar panel improvements that we can apply to the Halo 13. We will estimate how much solar input we can get and what will be the infinite range speed we can sustain when crossing the Atlantic or the Pacific Ocean. Stay tuned to the adventure of a lifetime where I build these super yachts that carry you to a life of sovereignty, power and adventure. Thank you.